on Lincoln? No one in this family ever willingly lets me do experiments on them. Hi, my name's Ari Castleton. I am the storyboard supervisor on The Loud House, and today we're going to be drawing Lisa Loud. Dazzle me or it's back to school for you, truants. Lisa is the second youngest kid of the Loud family. She's also the smartest one. She's not just like normal smart, she's She's like a genius. I'm honored. I'd say I have a lump in my throat, but we both know it's merely the tightening of my esophageal sphincter. She has a big circular head and she has a big brain in it. So we have to start with a circle. That's kind of like the basic shape of her head. And after that, I usually like to just throw her hair on top and she has this messy kind of like frazzled hair just because she's up all night working on experiments. She doesn't really care about how her hair looks or anything. And after that, I draw something we call a crosshair down the circle. And what that is, is just it's a little plus that you throw in the middle of the circle, just so you can kind of know where to place the eyes and like the mouth and everything. So once you put that in, you can draw her big glasses. She has these big glasses because she's really studious. Lisa, what the heck is going on? I asked to be transferred here because kindergarten is a complete waste of my time. I'm gonna kind of make her eyes a little slanted. She's not very impressed. She's really hard to impress because she's so smart. She's just kind of like, okay, I'm Lisa, I know. I'm I know I'm the smartest one. One monkey, two monkey, five. So. For the love of Pythagoras, it's five. Give her a little eyebrow raise. And then after that, you've got to draw the rest of her hair off the side of her head. So you give her these little half circle ears right there. And the rest of her hair is kind of like a bob. And that is like, it's kind of chopped off really short. So. It's just like a little triangle. Just imagine there's like a big triangle kind of going through her head. And that's where the bottom of the, her hair kind of lie. Oh, and then she has this little button nose right here. And then I'm gonna draw the rest of her glasses. And don't forget to kind of like put a rim on those glasses. She has really thick glasses. Cool. So then we'll just give her a little mouth. She's like, mm-hmm, okay. Not too impressed with you. Could you please just try and act like an average kid? That's like asking a sea cucumber to act like a cephalopod. I see someone didn't do his science homework. And she wears this little sweater, a little green sweater. And the shape of that is just kind of like a little box. And going off of that, you can kind of bring her legs down. You can kind of see the shapes forming. And you can give her a little shoe. She has these little loafers on. I always like your shoes too. They remind me of my grandpa's friend calls them grandpa shoes and she's not too wrong. Because Lisa's so smart and she's so confident in herself, I'm gonna give her a little arm fold. And these can be a little tough to draw, but just kind of think of how the arms would like sit with one another. Arms are kind of like these two tubes and you just kind of fold them into each other like that. This one kind of tucks into that one and this one kind of peeks. So you can see some of the fingers peeking out of that one. And each other's sleeves right there. And if you mess up, it's totally okay. You can just restart again. It's really hard to do this stuff on the first try, so don't worry about it. Cool. So then that's kind of like our base for Lisa. If you're watching this, Einstein! Cool, so we got our different brush here. It's a little darker and more inky, which is something I like. You can use whatever brush you, you're comfortable with. So you just kind of trace the shapes that you had before. And the thing with her hair, you can see I'm not really following the lines of my drawing underneath, but that's okay because if I discover that I like something a little bit different afterwards, I have that freedom to add in. And see how I'm kind of undoing my drawings after trying something out and it doesn't quite work? You're totally able to do that. So her eyes, she has these big glasses like that. And I'm kind of like color in the rims there. Just kind of do the same thing for the other side. You can kind of start with like little lines that slowly make up the shape and just kind of go over it again and just keep adding to your final drawing until you're happy with it. Eyelids right here. And I try not to keep things too straight on the head. The head is, you know, a sphere. So it's three dimensional, right? Um, so if you draw eyes on it, the eyelids won't be flat. They'll kind of follow the circumference of that sphere. So I kind of like to add a little curvature to the eyes. 
And you don't always get it on the first try, but that's, again, that's totally okay. You can kind of just color in our pupils here. You can kind of see the drawing coming together. Put our little eyebrows there. Cool, so I kind of like how my head shape started out as, so I'm just gonna kind of trace that. And you can see one of my, my under drawing, the hair is kind of going over the original drawing I had, so I'm just gonna put the hair down first and then continue my drawing. That way it kind of gives um, the drawing a little bit of depth. And that's kind of what makes your character look alive and real. I've never felt more in control or more alive. Go up here for the ear to sit on, so the ear's kind of coming out of the hair. Oop, oop, full ear folds. And we can put the rest of the glasses right here. Then just follow the hair. And then, boom. You yeah, can't forget her mouth and her nose. And if you ever have these drawings where the lines are kind of overlapping each other, just pull up an eraser and just kind of erase the part that's overlapping. Cool. Mm -hmm. That's kind of her head. It's looking good so far. All right, and let's start with her body. We got her the neck of her sweater. And what I like to do with my drawings is whenever kids are acting out or doing a pose, I like to put their shoulder just a little bit higher than where the body meets the head. And kind of I erase a little bit right there. Just, it gives them a little bit more attitude and kind of shows a little bit of more overlapping, which is nice for character design. And then since we have a lot of overlapping parts here with the arms, I always try to start with the top part so I don't have to erase as much. The top part here is gonna be the fingers. You just draw these little nubbies, kind of go in here. You can draw the rest of the arm that goes here. Kind of tuck it into that. I'm just tracing my drawing here. It's totally okay. Boop, boop, and then there's the sleeve there. And there's the hand there. Cool, that looks okay. Yes! Thank you, Nasha! Let's get the rest of the sweater in. And there it is, there's the bottom of it. And I kind of noticed in my underdrawing that the legs seemed a little bit shorter compared to the rest of the body. You've poked a bear, my friend. This is why I have a second chance with this new drawing on top. I can kind of just follow what I had before, but then just make it a little bit taller because I kind of changed my mind about how I wanted it to look. And there's her little like, feet. Draw the little folds of her pants here. Huh, that was actually quite satisfying. And then I like to add little details to the body, kind of just like a little bottom gum of her like shoe, maybe some like shoe lines here for like shoelaces. You can even add a little bit of shadow over her underneath parts that are kind of lying on top of each other. That's kind of a loud house style here. So just these little shadows, you don't have to put them everywhere. Just use them where you think they'll help pop the character a little bit. That's looking good. So if we turn off this under drawing. Well, Houston, mission accomplished. My master plan was a major success. Cool, and that's how you draw Lisa Loud.